In March 2020, Canada went into lockdown. Schools, stores, and non-essential businesses closed. We saw resource shortages, events cancelled, gatherings deemed unsafe. And the world had to carry on. The Canada During COVID-19 Living Archive serves as a record of Canadian life during the pandemic. Here are just a few of the stories shared. Heather has been homeschooling her kids since March. Her husband was on tour with Michael Bublé when the pandemic hit. I think for him it was a identity crisis and obviously the entertainment industry is probably going to be the last to recover. We didn't realize what a treasure it was to be able to gather and have a live experience. Um, and I think, I think until the music returns, we really can't say that we've healed as a society. I was in Spain in January and I got a cough and for three days I couldn't walk. I was pretty much bed bound for at least four months and the cough persisted till May. And we don't have family in BC, so it's just me and the kids. And I was so sick that I put it out on Facebook, like, is there anyone who might be able to watch my kids last minute if I need to go to the hospital? I really felt like I might die. <laughs> I, I wasn't making the connection in my head that I had COVID, but um, in hindsight, it's like, maybe I felt like I was going to die because I maybe came close. Justin is a photographer, social worker, and HIV activist. When his city went into lockdown, he hit the streets to give food to the homeless and document Black Lives Matter protests. The pandemic has definitely affected marginalized communities just, you know, exponentially worse. Early in the pandemic, I ended up uh, doing some food outreach where I was walking around Toronto giving food to people who are experiencing homelessness. And I actually photographed a lot of the folks that I was meeting and they were gladly telling me their stories. As photographers, we have so much power to tell a story and to shed light on, on issues that people often ignore. Almost every single person at, at the BLM uh, protests were wearing masks, which was amazing. It made me proud, the fact that, you know, we were willing to, to stand up for a cause. We were doing it safely. But it restored my faith in humanity. Amber is an artist and a teacher. She helped tackle isolation in nursing homes by painting outdoor murals. All of a sudden, it's deemed unsafe for them to leave. Even with the care of the nursing home, I couldn't even go and visit. The staff noticed, okay, this, this isn't working. Like We need to find other ways to help their mental health. And you know, if, if your mental health isn't okay, it's really hard to keep fighting. I was able to bring them out using art. And that was something, it was amazing to see. They really felt like they were part of a community. Clara is a respiratory therapist. She worked on the front lines at the height of the pandemic. En fait, c'était vraiment épeurant au début. On pensait que on allait manquer de personnel, on pensait qu'on allait manquer de place, qu'on allait manquer de matériel. Euh, fait que c'était super. Euh, on savait pas trop à quoi s'attendre. Ce que j'ai remarqué, puis ce qui m'a vraiment frappé, c'est que chaque personne va tellement réagir d'une façon différente par rapport à ça. Autant qu'on peut avoir un jeune homme de 50 ans qui a quelques comorbidités, mais tu sais, un jeune homme de, dans la cinquantaine qui va avoir, qui va finir intubé pendant plusieurs semaines, puis sur respirateur, qu'on peut avoir aussi une personne de 80 ans, 90 ans, qui va seulement avoir un petit besoin d'un petit peu d'oxygène. On a comme l'impression que c'est une guerre qu'on est en train de vivre, c'est une autre sorte de guerre, mais c'est une guerre contre un virus. Puis, tu sais, on n'est pas des anges gardiens là-dedans, on est vraiment des soldats, on est au premier front, c'est nous qui, qui sommes les premiers à la ligne pour pouvoir battre le COVID. Kogi was president of their high school graduating class of 2020. They reached out to graduates across the globe to create a video valedictorian speech to inspire students who didn't get to have a graduation. I had a sister who'd graduated a couple years before me and seeing her walk down the stage during convocation was like this incredible moment for me. I was like, one day I'm gonna get to do that. And now I'm on to this next chapter of my life. And Having that like taken away from me, that was by far the dis biggest disappointment. I think the class of 2020 uh, wanted to be heard. Um, they wanted people to understand like what this felt like. Although we are physically not together, we are like by no means alone, right? There are millions of people across the globe who feel the exact same disappointment as you do, who are going through the same thing. 
And really, at the end of the day, we are connected through our experiences. Tuyet is a mother of two and a Toronto District School Board teacher. She encouraged her young students to journal as a way to discuss fears and loss. I think the mental piece led itself to being more important than um, academics because that that really led it like you know that comes first. The project was writing a reflection. How do you feel? What are you fearing? What is in your head right now? What are you doing at home? And one of my most powerful journal was from a boy whose parents are both nurses. He wrote, I, I'm scared because my parents are both nurses. We can't see my grandparents. I'm worried about them going to work and then coming back. I, I was so emotional reading it. And for him to have been able to write that, I think it was really powerful because today he can look back and like, oh, you know, my parents came through, like, we're okay. Apart and together, Canadians continue to battle the effects of grief and isolation. You're in a constant state of paranoia. And it's not just the, the fear of sickness, it's the fear of how am I going to you know, get my next paycheck? How am I going to feed my family? Will any, anything ever get to back to normal again? My husband actually did lose his brother-in-law in March and he went back to Montreal for the funeral. And then halfway through the week, it's like, oh, funeral's canceled. And you know, it was, so they never really got to grieve that loss. Jamais de ma sainte vie, j'aurais imaginé vivre ça dans ma carrière. Puis, tu sais, c'est quelque chose qu'on ne nous prépare pas à l'école parce que c'est quelque chose qui arrive jamais, qui arrive une fois ou cent ans, tu sais. But it's also been a time to reflect on what matters. We appreciate our cashiers at the grocery store. You know, we appreciate the people that we may have never noticed before. I have some very, very uh, timid kids who are very bright, but they wouldn't want to share their answers. So then when we pivot online, everybody was comfortable because they were in their own homes. I think I've learned that um, kind of whatever is thrown at me, I'm going to be able and willing to adapt to it. And even if things are tough, um, I'm able to not only help myself get out of it, but also help those surrounding me and lift up my friends. Sometimes you want to make an impact on this world. It's not always about doing this huge gesture. Sometimes it's just about being kind and loving to the person right in front of you. Discover more stories at CanadaDuringCovid19.ca.